Video, so we now have the full release of Gold 10 version to point for B18.5. Previously, there was a public beta for a limited time, which you could access via the Gold 10 Discord, and it would give you access to the payload. But it had a time limit of 30 minutes, after which it stopped working or shut down your PS4. So that was just a temporary thing. Now we have the full release. So there's no more time limit, and you'll be able to fully access Now the this. main benefit of this version is a huge number of additional firmwares that are are now supported. With Gold 10 now previous versions, we were lucky if we got one new firmware in each Getting version. supported like 9 dot I think in one of the previous versions like 18.12.0 and 12.02 and but B this version adds a whole host of new firmware. So we're talking 7.x firmwares, 8.x firmwares, 9.x firmware, 11.x and then of course 12.0 and 12.02 so firmwares that were previously not supported. Especially ones like 11.02, 11.50, 11.52 now have full gold hand support with this particular version. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get the payload set up and installed on your PS4. And then we'll go through some other features that have also because been there added. has been a few additional H options added in this as new well version. as all of the new firmwares that have Not been supported. Not only that, but we also got a new release of PS4 to Debug go along by with the new version of Goldhen, which also now supports firmwares from 5.05 up to 12.02. So first of all, to get this up, we're and gonna running, go ahead and download the latest, which you beta. can download from Sistro's Kofi page or Kofi page. So all you gotta do is simply enter a donation amount. If you want to leave a donation, I would recommend it to support uh, the Golden Team's work. But otherwise, if you don't want to enter a donation, you can just enter zero and then select the get now option just to get the download. If that's what you want and then you can go ahead and check out, which will give you the download link. So given the fact that 10 gold, now supports all of these additional it's firmware probably versions, a good idea just how to, cover to actually get this version of Gold 10 using running. the various different jailbreaks that are currently available. So of we course, do have the new Blu-ray drive exploit that but was it released, has not yet been chained with the kernel exploits to run the jailbreak. So I cannot show that yet. So starting with the latest jailbreak that uses the Lua exploit and the Labs kernel to exploit, run the jailbreak, which requires one of the supported Japanese games. So you need to have one of as games. well as the auto Lua loader save file installed on your PS4. That can be used to load it, which is this project here. Now, I do have a full tutorial that shows you how to set up, up that to jailbreak, firmware 12.02, which I'll leave linked in the video description. Assuming you have that set up, all you need to do is open up the zip file for Golden, and then extract the Golden.bin file to the root of that an X. formatted USB drive, and simply rename the gold 10bin file to payload.bin instead, and then plug that USB drive into your PS4, at which point you can then load the jailbreak, by running one of the compatible Japanese games which will then run the modified save file for the auto and loader. it will then copy the payload from the USB drive to the internal storage so that the next time you want to you load can it, just run it from there the USB drive will no longer be required and you now have the latest version of Goldhen running on your PS4 and that works from firmware 5.05 I believe all the way up to 12.02 and that's how you get up and running with the with latest this version jailbreak. of Goldhen now if you want to get up and running using the previous which jailbreak, is the Pwn jailbreak which works from firmware 7.00 all the way up to 11.00. Well, in that case, obviously, there's so many different devices that can run that jailbreak. That send the network data to jailbreak the console. So you might have a Raspberry Pi setup or a Luckfox Pico setup or... You know any other number of different devices that can be used to run the jailbreak on the console. So in which case you pretty much don't need to update anything. You can just again copy the gold 10 dot bin payload from the 7 ZIP file over to the root of the FAT3 2 ORS FAT formatted USB You do drive. not need to rename the payload this time to payload dot Just bin. leave it as gold hand dot bin and you should be good. Plug it into your console and, and then run your normal pwn exploit. And that should get up and running with the jailbreak. It's as simple as that now. If you're wanting to run it using a previously unsupported firmware, then things are a little bit different. In my different. case, I'll use my computer to run the Pwn exploit here on an 8.52 console that was previously unsupported. So in this case, I'll head over to the network settings. Set up my internet settings using PPPoE with PPP as the username and, and password. And then simply enter automatic for all of the other settings. At which point, if I head to system settings and console information. You can see we are on firmware 8.52. That was previously unsupported. 
Now what I can do is simply go back into that 7z IP file, and in there you'll see the pppon underscore stage to folder. If we go in there we have stage to version 1.05. Inside there we have all of the different stage to loaders. all of the supported firmwares. So we can take one of the firmwares that previously didn't have a stage like to loader. Like 8.52 and extract that out to my desktop here. At which point I'll use one of the applications on my computer to run the, the jailbreak. GUI. I'll open up this program and drag in the stage to loader for 8.52 and then simply select from the firmware list firmware 8.52 cause that's the from where the console and is then running. I can simply select the ethernet adapter which is connected to the PS4 and then run the exploit and that will run the pwn exploit on the PS4 it will send the required network data to the console to run the jailbreak and once that runs successfully, it will then give us the pppon message. And then it will copy the payload. Again from the USB drive to the internal storage. And once that's complete, it will then load that version so the of next Gold time 10. you want to load the it. The USB drive will no longer be required. Because the payload is now on the internal storage. And that is how we get up and running with the on a previously here. unsupported firmware using the Pwn exploit. Which is fantastic. And again, I could have also loaded it using one of the other And jailbreaks. speaking of which, if you're on a firmware from 7.0 all the way up to a 9.6, you can also use the lab's exploit from the web browser to run the jailbreak. Up. In this case, you don't need to copy any because payloads the payloads will be included in whichever web host you're using. So, and I would probably recommend using NASCY's host We can at just the head over to the web browser and go to nasky.io forward slash ps3 to access the And that version, I believe, supports firmware 7.0 all the way up to 9.6. It may take a day or two for NASCY to include the new Gold 10 but payload. But it should get added for all of those supported firmwares. So that you'll be able to simply load it from there. By selecting the button and running the jailbreak. And that will get it up and running in just a few seconds. Obviously, there is an issue at the moment with black And screens. save data corruption on those firmwares. Using this particular exploit. So if you're using the web browser to You might it. want to also enable the plugin. The audio fix plugin. Which can resolve the black screen and save data corruption issues. Which I have already made a I'll video on. I'll leave a tutorial it. down in the video to description. To fix those issues. And if you're using one of the older jailbreaks from the like web browser. 6.7 to etc. 9.00. You can use the older exploit hosts or host them yourself. If you're using one of the older ones. You can ones. use the I think Caro 2. 18.ir is still up which supports all of those older And then there's KMEPS for dot site which supports 9.00. So you can use those, but typically, they do not get updated with the latest Gold 10 payloads. So what you can do instead is simply run the bin loader option in those older exploits. And then once that's you running, you can then use a payload injector on your computer or phone, like Netcat GUI or some other payload to injector, to just load the latest golden payload into that payload injector. Enter the PS5's IP address and port number will be either 902 or 902. One and then inject the payload. And that will get it up and running using those older jailbreaks too. So that's too. pretty much how you get Gold using 10 running. Using all of the previous jailbreaks that are available. And supporting all of these new firmwares. Now in addition to we this. We also have PS for debug that has been updated too. And it also supports firmwares from 5.5 all the way up to 12.02 as SOPS. well. SOP debug is now fully functional on those firmwares. That were previously unsupported too. And PS for debug if you're unfamiliar. Can be used for remote debugging the console and also using trainers mod tools you know injecting mod menus into your games that kind of thing you know and actually creating your own sheets you can for do your all games. of that stuff with ps for debug and more so that is now also supported so to get ps for debug running on our 8.50 we can head over here. to golden head over to the server settings and enable the bin loader server and that's now listening on the PS4's IP address on port 9090. Now, if I switch over to my desktop again, I'll use a payload injector to inject the payload for PS for debug. I'll just drag it in here and then simply select 90. 90 as the port number and then of enter course, the PS4's IP address and inject the and payload. And as you can see, we get payload received and there it is. 
PS for Debug is now running on 8.52. As oh, that brings these obscure firmwares, the 8.x7.x firmware, up to the same level of support as all of the main firmwares that have had support for a long time. It kind of brings everybody up to the same level. No matter what firmware you're From on. From 5.05 right the way up to 12.02. Which is fantastic news. So that is the main benefit here of this new version of Gold 10. But what I'll do is I'll also just quickly cover a couple of the other improvements that have been made in this version just to show some of the new features that have if been you added missed them, here. So what we have first of all is that if you press options on any of your applications and go to information, it now shows a time played at the top as well as game starts. Should show the amount of times that the game has been I launched. I believe or the application's been launched. And then launched. the amount of time that you've spent in that application is now displayed. So that's a new feature that's been added. Another new feature is in the gold 10 if settings. If we go to the settings option, we now have a date and time Which option. allows you to update the date and time using the internet. Internet. So if your console is connected to the internet, it can use google.com to sync the time, the date and time for your clock. So you can just select that option and it will update oh, with it. the current date and time and it will sync it online. That way you don't have to manually enter If you enter have it. like a dead CMOS battery or you the know, the clock's been unsynced in the past because the CMOS battery Even died. if you replaced it, it'll probably keep resetting the clock every time you restart the console. So to avoid, you know, having to manually enter. We enter the date and time every single time you reboot the you console. You can just select this option and, and update it. with the internet, which is great. And then you can also enable the auto update of the date and time, so that whenever you relaunch Goldhen, it will automatically sync the date and time after it loads Goldhen. So you don't that have to come into this menu and select the option it every too. single time. It will time. just do it whenever you launch it. And it, it also has an option for offline users. And which is the ability to just set it to January 1st, 2025. So if you're offline, you can just set it to which that Which again date. is for people who have you know, it. You maybe reset way back to like 1970. That will get it up to the current year if you're offline. Because it cannot sync it with the internet. There's also been an improvement made to the bin loader As server. well to allow it to load ELF files instead of just .bin files. Because there's the payload type. There's the ELF payloads and the bin payloads. And I think the previous bin loader would only load a bin payloads. Whereas now it's also supporting ELF payloads as well. So the two different types of payloads can now be loaded Golden's using. Golden's bin loader. So that pretty much sums it up here for this new version of Goldhen. We have a ton of additional firmwares now supported. All the way from 5.05 up to 12.02. Pretty much all the firmwares in between are supported. And they're all kind of up to the same level. With full Goldhen support. And PS for debug support now included. Which is great. And especially given the fact that most homebrew especially applications the main now ones that people use are firmware agnostic as well. Which means most of them will also all work of these on obscure firmware that previously were not it's supported. It's fantastic it brings everyone up to the same Which level. Which is great so yeah. Fantastic news there so That's anyway, gonna do it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did useful. please leave a like and, and once subscribe. again I'll hopefully see